Hey everybody, uh, Uncle Papa Johnny back here with you, uh, aka Jonathan is my real name, but uh, Uncle Papa Johnny's what we've decided to go with um, for the YouTube channel. Uh, my wife's family's really close, and of course, uh, I've said we have a we have a grandbaby now that's just over a year old, and our niece had a uh, a little boy here recently, and well, back in November, and. Uh, my wife went to hand him to me one day and she said, here, Papa. And I said, you gonna call me Papa? And we all kind of laughed and said, Uncle Papa Johnny. So it just kind of stuck since then, uh, just joking around and stuff, but it seemed like an appropriate name for the channel. Got a healer that wants to bark. Bailey, quiet. She's wanting to play with one of the other dogs and they don't want to play, but uh, I'm, I got a video here for you today that I hope that you find interesting. And I told you all a while back that I would do some uh, uh, canning videos with deer meat and I run out of daylight. I tried to do it out here and I run out of daylight and temperatures got cold and it was hard for me to get uh, the product pot up to pressure, uh, to do the pressure canning. But we've got a beautiful day here in March now and I don't have deer meat for you, but I've got meat for you. And this is something that you can do that will help you out it's easy uh it makes quick easy meals uh i think it's wonderful what i've got is a pork tenderloin uh, our local grocery store uh had pork tenderloin on sale uh the other day so i went and picked up a whole one dollar 49 a pound that's as cheap as you can get it and i like canned pork loin my mama loves canned pork loin and that's where i got it from it, it comes out a little bit uh it actually comes out so tender that it crumbles so when you throw it in a skillet and brown it, you don't get the big pieces of pork chop. You get real tender little pieces. Uh, I love to make gravy with it. Uh, it just makes a great thing. Now it is a little drier, so you will have to add some kind of bacon grease to it, or you'll have to add some a little bit of oil or butter. Of course, bacon grease or butter would be a lot better than oil, but you have to add something to it when you brown it. But it just makes a real quick, easy meal to, to brown. I've also got a... Uh, and I've never done this before, but I think it's going to be absolutely wonderful. I've got a um, beef roast, and my wife loves a beef roast. I'm going to cube that beef roast up just exactly how I would do my deer meat, and uh, that'll show you exactly how I do my deer meat when I can it and how I know most people do it. Uh, real simple, real quick, real easy. Uh, so let's get started here. But like I said, it's a beautiful, beautiful March day beautiful march day i've actually got some shorts on because i can work uh, i work in a controlled environment and i can wear shorts in there because it's warm and it's warm enough out here right now to have shorts on uh, but i've got my jars ready and uh, yesterday evening for time wise with y'all i went ahead and, and and got some of it cut up and put in jars and i put my lid on it just to store it in the refrigerator and that's the thing about doing this canning if, if you know so you don't have time one night and the next night you've got time but the night that maybe you don't have time to go through the whole process you can get everything ready you can get your meat cut up you get your jars ready uh, and do that the first thing i'm going to tell you that that i think you need to do or that you need to do in my opinion regardless uh i believe you need to wash your jars brand new jars uh I'm a firm believer they need to be washed. They, th they have been transported. They have been uh, made in a factory. And we all know that uh, things happen in factories. I work in the factories. Things get by inspectors. Inspectors try to do a good job. Things get by them. They could be a chip in these glasses. Could be little pieces of glass got dropped down in this jar. I washed these jars yesterday. Well, my wife washed these jars yesterday for me while I was at work. Yesterday was her day off. But uh, let these jars dry good. And I always take a rag or a paper towel, what I've got here. Check the top of that lid. Check the top of that uh, jar real good. Make sure that there's no uh, little old cracks, little old uh, anything that maybe it won't seal. Uh, a chip gone out of the glass. That'll ensure that you don't have, shouldn't have any chips of glass down in there because we know that that could be fatal for you it could be horrifying for you to have to go to the doctor have to go to the hospital for chip or glass because you didn't take just a few seconds to wipe your rings out do that make sure your lids are good and clean uh, 
my wife washed like i said she washed all this stuff off for me yesterday no uh, why i'm thinking about it no you cannot reuse these lids they won't seal what you can do is save your rings buy the flats they call them flats you can buy the flats in the store i'm sure most of y'all know more about this than i do but uh there was a lot of people seem to be interested in meat videos listen y'all i have been a hundred and ten percent overwhelmed with with the amount of people that were interested in the few videos that i've done so far right now we have almost we have almost 700 subscribers uh, I, I looked just before i got on here 691 we we're within single digits of having 700. i was blown away at 100. i was shocked at 200. It jumped this past week, uh, 500, now 600, almost 700. I'm shocked. So what I done, this may sound crazy, but what I done, y'all seem to like to support me so much. I ordered some stickers from a man uh, that, that makes, I'm not talking about these vinyl cut stickers. He makes first class stickers and they'll be available uh, soon. I don't have a website set up yet. I have a, a young man that's working on that for me. Actually, my niece's husband is working on that for me. He, uh, he can design, do web design, so he's working on that for me to try to get that set up. Um, but I will make it easy for you to be able to get these stickers and stuff if that's what you want. And once I get them, I will do, uh, I'll give some away. I'll, I'll do like five and we'll do a giveaway on that. I will tell you right now, you can go ahead and go to Facebook. You can look up Uncle Papa Johnny on Facebook. Very few things are on there. It's only been up for just a week or so. Uh, but I went ahead and made a Facebook page. Like I said, guys, y'all have utterly shocked me with the amount of support, the amount of uh, how much you say that you enjoy what I say, um, how much, uh, I mean, everybody's telling me, don't worry about how you talk. You, you talk just fine, don't worry about that. Don't worry about, uh, don't worry about this, don't worry about that. People are telling me they don't see anything wrong with me using just the iPhone to film with. I, I do have a camera that I've, purchase from a guy that does uh self filmed hunts and um he has uh he sold me the camera but i've got to get an sd card which i keep forgetting to pick up every time i'm at walmart but uh i need to get that and uh i need to i need to play with it some i originally planned on doing just all hunting stuff but uh, y'all seem to be y'all seem to like the countryside of life too or, or mainly hunting stuff i wanted to show y'all some country style living and things that we do and uh like i said i just take this pork chop or this pork loin excuse me and i just make pork chops out of it i don't know that's about a half inch or something right there if you notice i'm using my razor light that i've done the video on uh still no sponsorship from outdoor edge on that but uh, I'm using that razor light knife. I like it. It cuts good. I've used this blade several times for different things. I just take it and wash it. I wash my knife real good. I take the blade out and clean in around the the support that holds it on the back here, and and I just uh, I just keep going a lot right along with it. Um, I had a piece of pork chop there where I had cut it into chops that I cut in half. It was on the big end of the loin. Like I said, this stuff is going to. Uh, it's going to flake off and uh, it's going to be tender just like a beef roast to do if you cook it in a crock pot. It gets real tender. Uh, it's going to flake off and stuff on you so it doesn't have to be perfect cuts. I am, uh, I cut a lot of the fat off but I didn't cut it off and I'm going to drop a piece of fat in there because fat is flavor. If you watch any cooking shows like I like to watch and, and, and stuff like that, uh, fat is flavor and uh, that'll just give me a little more grease uh if i decide i want to make gravy when i when i heat this up um something else this is good this is gonna be good for hey if power goes out and you need something real quick and easy to heat up maybe on the grill you'll be able to heat this up on the grill and be ready to go uh you'll be able to you know just throw it out and on a skillet and grill and heal it, heat it up if the power goes out uh you'll have food um you like me and your wife likes to go on trips with her her family and stuff and times that i stay at home uh, real quick easy meal for me to fix by myself uh, i can cook 
but you know, who wants to cook a big old fancy whole meal when it's just you? So, uh, like I said, I just continue to cut these pork chops up. And if you notice there, while I was while I was running my mouth talking to you, I was mashing that meat down in that jar firm. You want to uh, pack it in there, and uh, you want to leave what they call headspace. You, you want to leave that headspace right there around the top of this jar. And this one's just a little bit full, but it, it'll be fine. Uh, start my next jar, drop my little piece of fat in there I had left over. And this jar probably is not going to get completely full, but but that's not going to hurt anything either. I mean, it'll still can, it'll still seal. It just won't be a good full jar. If I need to, I'll make it a little more like the rest of them, I might be able to take this chop out, split that sucker right in two, like I showed you earlier. And that makes it a little more full. Uh, but now, I'll move my board around over here where I don't have no pork touching, which wipe my knife off the best I can. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's pork, it's beef, it's gonna be cooked real good. It's not gonna hurt a thing, but uh, let's wipe it off. Some people might get antsy about it. I, I watched a video earlier of a guy fixing uh, what looked to be uh, what looked to be like some kind of jambalaya. And because he was outside, on his carport with a big gas cooker, somebody was like, ooh, nasty, I'm, I wouldn't eat that, you could fix that on your carport, ooh, gross. Let me tell you something, people, you have no earthly idea what you're eating in these restaurants when you eat in there. Yeah, we've got food inspectors and everything else, but trust me, you don't know. You don't know, you don't have a clue. And that guy's carport looked nice and clean. Uh, hey, I'm down here at the barn, but I've got a clean cutting board I brought from my house. I cleaned my jars in the house. I brought everything down nice and clean before I come, so listen, I'm not worried about it. Uh, if that type of cooking and stuff bothers you, you probably shouldn't be watching Uncle Papa Johnny. But uh, you seen me take that beef roast, and uh, this is just a, a bottom round roast, and this is exactly the way I do my deer. Uh, cut it up in pieces about yay so. It don't have to be perfect. Don't, don't get stressed out over it. Don't worry about it. And I'm going to cut maybe one inch cubes off of this. Uh, and the bigger pieces I'll cut up. I'm leaving my fat on this. We can pick the fat off of it when we cook it or when we heat it up if we need to. Fat's flavor. I like a little fat, which this has got good marbling in it, but I don't want it to be too lean. I'm going to cube this up in one inch cubes, three quarter inch cubes. It don't have to be perfect. You no reason to stress about something like this. This is your grandmama would say if you ask her how she made a recipe, well, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. In you go. You want to pack that meat down there, just like I showed you the pork tender one. Listen, this is all going to be done the same way. I'm just cubing this up, and this is just something for me, my wife, to try to see if 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 we like this beef roast fixed this way uh, it'll be a real quick easy meal for us i've got all kinds of other things i can show you that i do uh, for us if y'all are interested i make uh make some soups and i make a big huge pot of soups and it's just me and her especially now at the house and I make a taco soup which i love uh make a vegetable soup which is what she really likes and i don't really like the vegetable soup but and she don't really like taco soup, so cold winter days, we both want soup. I can warm up a jar of the taco soup. She can warm up a jar of the uh, vegetable soup. I can show y'all how I do that, if y'all want to see that. Uh, I've got another video that I'm, I'm getting ready to do. I'm getting the stuff together to do it with. I'm going to show you what water glassing eggs with, what water glassing eggs is. The thing about water glassing eggs is it'll help you store eggs I always thought for about a year, I did read something the other day that somebody said five years. I, I don't know if I want to store them five years because you don't refrigerate them. Uh, I'll show you how to do that if y'all are interested. I'll show y'all how, uh, how to take sausage. If you want to raise your own, uh, want to raise your own pork, let's put it that way. You want to raise your own hog and 
and uh, you've got mass amounts of sausage that you just don't want to freeze at all, I'll show you how to can sausage without a pressure cooker. I had a, a great aunt, man, she used to do it all the time. Uh, she used to can sausage and, and hey, if, if you don't want to grow, if you don't want to raise your own hog, you don't want to do that, but you'd like to have a, a way to store food like that when it goes on sale in the grocery store or, or uh, maybe somebody else gives you a, a big, huge bulk of sausage. Uh, I'll show you how to do it. I'll show you how to keep it. I'll show you how to uh, keep it stored without taking up all your freezer space. Uh, like I said, I had an aunt that used to do it all the time and it was nothing as a child to go in her house and have and see in the refrigerator uh, a jar of sausage that she had opened up and put in the refrigerator because after she opened it, of course, she needed to refrigerate it because it was just her. And, she needed to keep it for, uh, she needed to keep it, uh, you know, fresh after she opened it. I'm going to try something else uh, with this, and I, I pre-cut this in the house because I knew I'd be cutting the beef and stuff, and I didn't want to bring an onion out and cut it, but beef roast is really good with an onion in it. So I said, why not? This is cooking the process and keeping it and storing it. Why not? Uh, why not drop just a little bit of onion down in there and let that onion cook in with that beef roast to help flavor it? Not gonna hurt anything. Uh, if you put a beef roast, I know some of y'all are saying, well, I like potatoes, I like carrots and stuff of mine. You could probably do that. Uh, we just prefer to cook our potatoes and stuff separate. Uh, we'll eat it with it cooked in it. We're not that picky, but you know, we all have different little preferences we have. This is something my mama always done with the pork tenderloin and any kind of meats you can. Uh, of course, y'all, uh, a lot of y'all have seen my uh, hams that I tried to smoke cure for the deer or tried to salt and sugar cure for the deer first. And you seen that big old bag of salt that I had. Well, I've got the same salt right here, unidized natural salt. I'm gonna take about a teaspoon a teaspoon don't do what i did i i messed up of course beef takes a lot of salt this is mainly just uh mainly just for flavoring of your meat when i done the deer big dummy me was thinking tablespoon did he double check no, he put a tablespoon in it. I have been eating some of the deer that I canned. It's just a little more salty than what I would want, but uh, of course my blood pressure doesn't like that. This is what I want you to do now. We put salt in all those. I want you to get that rag again, that, that, uh, that paper towel. I want you to go back around the top of those jars. And what you're doing here is making sure you got no fat, no granules of salt, no meat, no anything stuck to those jars. Uh, packing those uh, pieces of pork coin in there made it, you know, they were a little bit larger and it, uh, sometimes you get some fat on the rings, but just wipe all them rings off or all these top of the lids off here. Get them good and clean. Get them things clean. Take your flat, put on your jar. Take your ring, snug it up. Drop it down in your pot. I've already got a flat in there. Instead of putting it on separate, I've already got them in there just lock and, lock and load. Drop them right down in this pot. I may run out of room in this pot. I didn't count my jar here. I can't exactly remember how many it holds, but so I may end up having to do a second batch that y'all don't see. I don't know. 
I think we're all gonna go. I think we're all gonna fit. I think I'd, thank good Lord. Good Lord has blessed us, and I think it's gonna come out just perfect. I think. If not, God's good anyway, it don't matter. We'll get it straightened out, took, took care of. Just uh, tighten them lids up good. They don't have to, you don't have to torque them down. You just want to be good and snug on there. So what's going to happen is we're going to heat this up. It's going to seal. We're going to build pressure in there and seal. A little bit of science going on here. Build pressure up in there and seal. So drop that down in there. What I've done is I, I pre-filled my pot with water. And I got a little more than, just a little bit more in there than I need. So I didn't bring no water down here with me this time. So I'm just going to take this a little bit out because I'm telling you guys, it ain't much over what I need at all. But, uh, ain't much over at all. You want about halfway or something like that up on your pint jars, about halfway up on your pint jars. I'm going to come get you. And you see there, all the jars sitting in there. You can see about where the water level's at. I hope that took good anyway. I couldn't see it, but what we're going to do now is I'm going to take my lid and put it on here. It's a pressure cooker. You want to, I've done done all this. If you want to check your seal, make sure your seal don't have no nicks, crooks, crack the crank because you need that pot to seal this pot has a specific place it has to lock on this handle here there's an arrow on this lid there is an arrow you want to you want that to drop down in there and lock what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to, i'm going to turn my heat on here good i'm going to turn my heat on here good and I'm gonna get her cranking. I may have to adjust my heat uh, in just a second to see what it does. But we're gonna to get to a particular pressure. And uh, once it gets to that pressure, and which this is a 15 uh, pound pot, once this pot gets to that pressure, this thing will start to jiggle. I know what the time is, but I'm going to double check it before I tell you because I don't want to tell you then I have to go back and correct myself. But I'm going to check. Uh, so right now, through the magic of video, I'm going to cut you off with this part, get ready to start jiggling, and you can come back with us real soon. So let's get this going. So you can tell a big difference right now that we're not at the barn anymore. Had to move inside. Uh, Putting on the stove here. It's got me and my wife a hamburger frying over there. For supper, hamburger patty. Uh, but the uh, sun went down and the uh, wind started blowing and it was just hard to get the temperature up high enough to start building pressure. So I had to come inside. Now, I'm also wanting to tell you, maybe I'm not pulling enough uh, uh, power down there to the barn uh, electricity uh, to be able to heat that hot plate up like it should be. So, uh, See this thing back there on these, the way they're designed, pops up. This is your jiggler, it'll start jiggling here in a little bit. But we're up to about, I'm well, probably getting up close to seven pounds. And uh, it will, uh, it needs to get up to 15 uh, for where we're at. And some people say 90 minutes. And my mom was always said 120 minutes. I'm well, not 120 minutes, excuse me, an hour and 20 minutes. That's why I was there. Uh, my mom was always said, uh, we're climbing up uh, in here uh, now on pressure finally. I had to come inside. Uh, sunset, we started getting a little bit of wind out there. The sun didn't set, the sun started going down, and we lived down in a hollow. But we're slowly building pressure now. Uh, we need to get up to 15 pounds for where I live at. And uh, once it gets to 15 pounds and that jiggler starts uh, moving right out of the weight, uh, we call them jigglers. 
once they start uh, once that thing starts jiggling and dancing around uh, at 15 pounds, uh, we'll need to go about about an hour and 20 minutes uh, and let her cool off. So once she gets up to 15 pounds, I'll bring y'all back and let you see. So it's 5:54 and that thing just started jiggling. Now what 15 pounds? And see why we call it a jiggling now. So we'll go an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, bring y'all back and show you what I uh, have to do then. I'm sure you can hear that grease to pop and we're, we're fixing stuff at the same time. So. Uh, but uh, just uh, we'll bring you back and let you see what we do next. Alright guys, so we've been going long enough here. Uh, it's been about an hour and 25 minutes. Uh, Mama says an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, some people say 90 minutes. Uh, it's been about an hour and 25. We've been long enough. Yeah, I'm going to come over back and cut my, cut my eye off. I'm just going to let it sit there now and cool. And uh, the thing about these things are you've got to be extremely careful with them. Uh, they can be dangerous. You know, you're under pressure. Uh, but remember, some people make bombs out of these things. So, uh, I'm just going to let it sit and completely cool. Uh, let everything... Uh, it's cool completely out, and actually, uh, I'll be going to bed here in just a little bit. I go to bed early and get up early, so uh, I'll be going to bed here in just a little bit. So I'm just going to let it sit on night and cool. And then, uh, right here is what uh, some of the deer meat that I can look at. It's what you'll see when you get it out. Notice the jar's got some. Uh, white cloudy stuff on it. We've got well water here and it's the climb water so that climb uh, will kind of dry up on the side of the jar if you bit and cook on it but that's what you've got when you get done. I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. I want to remind you to uh, like and subscribe but uh, that's what we've got. So alright guys uh, hope y'all really enjoyed that. Um, video you can probably still hear in the background i just come in here and sit down on my chair uh, you can probably still hear it, it uh, winding down uh, stopping to jiggle but uh got some more videos coming up for you that we planned um going to be testing a uh, some shells out this week uh for my 20 gauge stevens 301 that i turkey hunt with and uh going to also be uh Getting some other stuff together for you, uh, some water glass and some eggs and stuff that I mentioned. Um, for you, going to plan on filming some turkey hunts. I'm going to South Carolina here at the end of March to last day of March, first day of April to turkey hunt with a fella down there that I know. So uh, he runs a little operation down there and uh, takes people out on uh, very, very affordable turkey hunts. Uh, so I'm going to go with him. Uh, we're going to test this gun up. I've got some shells uh, that have been uh, that I found. I've got shells that I've been using in the past that, that I like, and just want to try out the the different kinds and see what there is out there. So I thought maybe I'd film that for you guys and show it to you too. Uh, I told you that I've got some stickers coming, and uh, I hope that uh, that you guys will want those. Uh, I don't know. I know a lot of other YouTubers do that stuff, and uh, I've got awesome, also working on some hats for me. So if y'all really want that stuff, uh, comment and let me know. You want a sticker? You want a hat? Uh, I'm going to try to make them as affordable as possible. Uh, I am finding out that, uh, you know, this stuff ain't cheap to get set up to do all this stuff uh, with YouTube. But uh, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. And I hope y'all enjoy these videos. Uh, I know it keeps looking like I'm looking over here and I'm looking at the phone and it's filming here and I've got to get used to that. But um, God bless y'all. Y'all have a, a great uh, rest of your week. And see y'all later.